Thank you. Hello, hello, you got me on mic? Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello, right there sounds good. Did you feel the energy? <laughs> hey, I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad to be here. I'm glad you're here. My name is Robert Smith. Um, tell you a little bit about my story. It's probably like some of yours, maybe. You know, my mother's 14 years old. She ran away from home. She probably had a good reason why to run away from home. She went to Texas. She came back home, gave birth to a little boy. I don't know who my father is. From what I heard, he's a very good-looking, highly intelligent man. <laughs> so that means I'm a bastard child. My father, my stepfather, the only father I've ever known, he was the oldest of nine kids. His dad was an alcoholic. His mother was a type who would marry an alcoholic. And at one point in his life, all his brothers and sisters were put in foster homes. He had a rough life. He was a hard worker. He was the oldest of nine. And he came into my life around six, six months old. And by the time my mother was 19, she had four of us. Of course, my father, you know, he did the best he could. He, he wasn't high school educated, but he worked hard. He, um, he'd have many jobs throughout the year. You know, we'd move from home to home. And my dad, um, you know, he just had a rough life too. You know, us kids, you know, we learn how to cope and deal with people in our lives, our fathers, our brothers, our aunts, our uncles. And dad would beat you at the drop of a hat. I mean, if he looked at you wrong, if he said anything, there was a beating. You know, we didn't greet him at the door because it wasn't safe. And so this is my environment when I grew up. You know, of course, I did have a grandmother who came by and pick us and pick us up, take us to church, you know, from my grandmother would say, we'd all have diaper rash really bad, hungry, and so uh, my dad's side, they're alcoholics, they all drink, you know, I remember the first time I got drunk, I was 13 years old, I went to my grandmother's house, my dad's side, first time I ever got drunk, is one of the best things I ever had at the time, and it was interesting, and she said, don't tell your other grandmother, because she's a Christian, you know, and so, this is my life. Now, of course, I remember one time, many years after my mom and dad had divorced, sitting around the dinner table, my dad said something is very unusual, and I had to think about it. He said, you know, I wouldn't have had so many kids if it hadn't been for my brothers. What does that mean? So here it is. I come from a family, a very functional, dysfunctional family. But you think about it. Here you are, wherever you came from, whatever emotional dynamics you have experienced growing up, this divine spark within you, this little bitty baby, is experiencing a world that's different than other worlds. You have your brothers, your aunts, your uncles, your abusers, the non-abusers, the lovers, the non-lovers, whatever it is, you figured out how to survive. You know, I have a brother that's one year younger than I am. Um, he looks a lot like my Uncle Eddie. He was a scapegoat. He got beat, even if he didn't do it, he was blamed, even if he was innocent, and he took it on. Now, of course, you can look at my brother Steve. He's been in prison three, two times. The next time he goes in for life, drinking and driving, and then the second time, hanging around the right people who helped put him in jail again, burglary, stealing. So he came, we all come from a good system because of where we landed. You know, of course, when I say where we landed, you know, I believe when you're born, the stage was set before you. I mean, if you think about it, here I am, I'm, my mother's 14 years old. She gives birth to a little boy at 15. The stage was set. I don't know who my father is. She may know who he is or may not. And here it is at the time in 1961. That's not a very good position to be in. And so she had her problems. She dealt with them. She had her pains, her hurts, her rejections, and this little boy came into her life. Now, of course, here it is. I'm just a baby looking up at this world. This is all I know. You know, if you were landed in a family who was wealthy and you were the golden child, the one they've been trying to have a baby and you're, you're it, and they have money, they have wealth, they're emotionally intelligent, they will treat you totally different than if you were the last of the 12 kids, the one your mother didn't want in the first place 
or the first one that was born, and you, she didn't like the guy who knocked her up. You came into this world, and it was set before you. The question is, you know, people ask me all the time, why am I so screwed up? Why am I in such a mess? Why do I have these problems? And I'm going to tell you, there's nothing wrong with you. You just went to a different school. You had a different environment, different system, and you survived. You took this stuff in. You utilized it. You created a world and understood how that world was to be. And today, you're at a good place right here. Habilitat. Now, Habilitat has a good belief system, has the same basic belief system I have, and that is there's nothing wrong with you. You just know how to have your problems. You just hadn't figured out how to change how you think. You know, of course, you know, I come from a family, you know, you don't, a man, you don't cry. You're tough. You don't show your emotion. They'll beat the crap out of you again. So here it is. We pretend to be tough. We pretend like we got it all together. But on the inside, you stink. You don't know how to deal with your pain. You don't know how to deal with your hurt. You tough it up, ignore it, and run. Do you, do, you know, this is one thing I discovered. I've been doing seminars since 2002. 2002, I started doing seminars about weight loss. You know, I don't care about weight loss. But I discovered something when I did weight loss that I figured out weight loss has everything we need to change. Because I thought, you know, just quit eating, you know. And I remember I, I took these books, you know, I make these weight loss books, and I go to this, the printing place, and the guy goes, well, I don't understand these fat people. You know, they just quit eating. And I said, you know, that's what they say about people like you, suck on cigarettes all day long. Why don't you just quit sucking on cigarettes? You know? But yet, both of those problems are the exact same problem. And what I discovered that you, every one of you, are experts at running. You got your shoes on. You run from your problems, you'll smoke it, you drink it, you'll screw it, you'll eat it, you'll, you'll, you'll do anything but deal with the real problem. I call it escapeaholics or avoidaholics. We play tough, we pretend like we're tough, we act like it's not there, we'll work, we'll clean, we'll do anything but go one place. And that's where the problem is. Most of us came into this world with emotionally ignorant people. That means if you feel bad, what are you going to do? What are you going to do if you feel bad? If you're here, you're sitting here with me, and I'm talking, and I'm saying all these words, and all of a sudden, a memory will pop inside your head, or a feeling shows up, what the hell are you going to do with it? You're going to divert your attention? You're going to run? You're going to eat? You're going to smoke? You'll, you'll zone out and pretend, pretend like you're not here? How are you going to change how you feel? See, what I discovered that real men, real women, intelligent men and women, figure out some way to take control. I don't know about you, but I don't like it when somebody can look at me or say something or do something and I feel bad, angry, or upset. Which means you, outside me, has more power than I have inside me. And so what I have discovered is how to change how I feel. And I'm not talking about running from my feelings. I'm actually saying change how you feel. If you knew how to do that, you know how much money you would have after you leave this place? You know how much wealth you'd have, how much relationship, how much better relationships you would have, how, how much healthier your body will feel, do you realize most and all your problems are designed from all the inability of not dealing with your problems? It's because you don't know how to deal with your problems. So, so here it is, you're upset, you're angry, what do you do with it? What do you do with it? Anybody? What do you do with your problems? You're upset, you can yell at somebody, you can beat somebody up, you can run, you can, you can go anywhere, but where does it go when you go? It goes with you, doesn't it? So what I'm talking about is creating soldiers of emotional intelligence, people with real power. Now, you know, I don't have, I mean, I have a high school education. I did go to college. I could not pass English 2. I tried three times and I quit. Right. Now, why did I try English, too, and I couldn't pass it? Is it because I was dumb? No. And i tell you why I couldn't. Because I moved from school to school to school, and I had learning difficulties. I rode the small bus to school. You know what that means? That was the special school bus. I rode that small school because I moved from school to school. 
we, we were not emotionally intelligent. We were angry, we were hurt kids because we moved around. And so I discovered that the reason why I couldn't pass English too is because I had stuff in my head with English and school teachers. And by the way, I discovered that most of your problems come from your past, every one of them. You know, the reason why I had problems with English is because I had bad English teachers. They didn't understand where I was coming from. The reason why I have problems with different people in my life is because I experienced those people. That could be like my mother, my father, my brother. It could be from somebody who picked on me at school. But I discovered inside you and I, we have programs that are operating perfectly. That means right now, you can feel bad or good just by doing something properly. Let me, let me help you understand what I'm saying. Everybody do this. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes. And I want you to remember a good experience in your life. It doesn't matter when it was or who it was with. It could be anything. It could be the day you held a baby, the day you, you did something, someone said they loved you, anything. Just think about something that makes you feel good. Now, you're going to notice what you do in your mind is that, first of all, you're thinking. Secondly, you'll notice inside your mind there's probably an image. And as you think about whatever it is, you can also feel it. Isn't that true? This is how your brain works. Look up here. In your mind, we have programs inside your head. That means things that happen without you thinking about what happens. One of the things I discovered when we think inside of our mind, we have pictures. We have pictures or we have movies or slideshows. That means you're laying in bed and you have all these memories just flashing through your mind. You ever have that happen? Yeah. And those memories are just happening. And, you know, some people said, well, I have insomnia. I said, you don't have it. Give it to me. I'll take some. You know, give me a pound of it or a couple of ounces. I could use some every now and then. I need to get stuff done. All right. So here it is. What do we have really? So inside of our mind, you're trying to sleep. You have a slideshow or movies or things flowing through your mind. It's entertaining your consciousness. But see, if you have no power to change what you hold within you, what is controlling you? Because if you think your mind has a mind of its own, it's the weirdest thing. Because, you know, it's, it's like, lady, I'm sorry my hand pinched you. It just has a mind of its own. <laughs> I mean, that's ridiculous. The problem is, is that most of us are emotionally stupid. We don't know how our minds work. We don't know how our bodies work. We just feel and experience life and then blame everybody else why we feel bad. But yet, you could do it right here in your chair. You can think about what happened to you at 12 years old. You can think about somebody in the room that irritates the fire out of you. Who is doing it to you? And it's you. But see, you don't know how to change the pictures in your mind. You don't know how to change the movies and the slideshows. And how many, have, how many, anybody talk to themselves inside yourself? Yeah, you have conversations? Anybody have other people talking to you inside your head? Like your mother saying stuff or your father saying stuff? Yeah. Now let me tell you something, it's not them. Your head's too small for them to fit in, trust me. <laughs> Whose voices are those? See, inside your mind, you have, you have voices. You have uh, songs. You have songs in your head? Yeah, all right. You have their voice and your voice. Whose voices are, what is inside you? Is it them or is it you? See, do you know how to change the voices in your head? You do? How do you do it? Most people don't. How do you change the pictures inside your head? You don't know. Do you realize that the past is over and it doesn't exist? Where are you right now? Are you, can you feel that wonderful soft chair underneath your rump? Can you feel the nice air conditioning blowing on you right now? No, I don't either. <laughs> but I want you to notice you're here with me. But here's the amazing part about your brain that you don't know about. Your brain is photographic. It's like it takes a snapshot of a moment. And the moment you start thinking about that moment, it starts to feel as if it's real right now. Isn't that true? All right, so what I'm trying to help you understand is that your brain is a hypnotic machine. That means your brain can go to a memory, and when you go to that memory, you feel like it's true. 
you feel like it's happening now. And not only that, it makes you do things sometimes when you don't want to do it. Isn't that right? But you, you, you hadn't discovered the art of changing your mind. And so here's the problem with people. They believe that the past and the memories are real. Did you hear what I just said? Do you believe it? How many of you, just, how many of you had a bad experience in your life? Every one of your hands should fucking go up right now. <laughs> or else you wouldn't be here. Right? You had bad experiences in your life. And by the way, are those experiences real today? No. Are you there? No. But you know what will happen to you? You'll start thinking about it. And the moment you start thinking about it, what happens then? It feels real, doesn't it? You feel the emotions of it. You feel the hurt of it. You feel the anger, the guilt of it. If you could change that, if you could go to your memory and totally change how you internalize it, how you hold it, and release the emotions, and you can go look at that memory and not feel it at all, how would your life be from this moment forward? If you go to every bad experience and every guilt, every anger, every rejection, every abandonment, everything that you could ever imagine, and you go to those memories and completely change it, how would your future change now? You can change everything. You know that, don't you? You know every decision you make today is based on what happened behind you that's already happened. You make decisions of what you wear, what you do, people you hang with, people you don't hang with, your hurts, your pains, it's all based on something in the past. And so most people believe when you have bad experiences and you have loads of bad experiences, there's nothing you can do about it. You're going to have to learn to live with it the rest of your life. Do you understand that? But you know what? That is absolutely not true. So what I do is I teach people how to take control. I give them power to change any and all bad emotions and feelings. I show them how to take control of everything that's ever affected them in any, any way possible. So, so one of the things I discovered that people, everybody, the rich the poor, the fat, the skinny, the tall, the short, the male, the female, the gay, the straight, are all the same. They all do it the same inside their head. They may do it uniquely different, but so let me help you understand. Here it is, you're with me today. And from the moment of birth, your mind start accumulating experiences. Sometimes experiences you cannot even remember. Experiences that's so deep inside your mind that you don't have any idea that it's there. For example, just being able to walk across the floor, your unconscious mind has memories in there how to use the muscles. I don't know if you've seen a little baby. How many of you have seen a little baby? And then, you know, they, they're going like this. And then all of a sudden they find a finger. And the next thing you know, they're putting their thumb in their mouth and they're sucking on it. At first they didn't know where it was or even what it was. And over a period of time, they figured out neurologically how to find their fingers. And they suck on it. And the next thing you know, I have grandchildren. Next thing you know, you lay them on the belly, they're just whining and whatever they're doing. And then they figure out they can pull their knees up and they stand on their knees and their hands rocking back and forth. They don't know what to do beyond that. And next thing you know, they start putting one in the other. Next thing you know, they're crawling all over the place. And next thing you know, I have a little Matthew. It's many years ago, he's 21 years old now, and he's crawling around the floor and I saw him munching on something. And I reach in there and I pull it out of his mouth and it was a June bug. If you don't know what a June bug, it's like a little beetle. And he started to cry because that June bug tasted good. <laughs> he did not like the idea I pulled it out of his mouth. But today, at 21 years old, he does not eat June bugs. Because see, children will learn from where they come from. Children will learn how to operate. You have discovered how to operate within the world. So let's say, for example, you've been beaten. You've had parents who, who were alcoholics, drug addicts, uh, whatever they are. And you've had kids at school beat you up, teachers you didn't like, brothers and dads and uncles and whatever else. And they keep affecting you. And this little child, this little you, starts accumulating all this information. And then they ask, wonder why little Johnny, little you, have trouble learning at school. You know, the, the lady who's a who has, uh, works at a mental health facility, she said, I was diagnosed with ADD or ADHD. And she says, I couldn't learn at school. It was impossible for me to learn at school because I knew once I got home, the babysitter would beat me every day. 
and I was petrified and terrified of going home. Now this little child, here it is, they have this fear inside their head and they keep operating. And then of course when they're at school, they're acting up and they're getting in trouble. And then all of a sudden they hate school, they hate learning because they can't concentrate because they got all this crap going on inside their head. And then they wonder why they don't feel very smart, they don't feel very good, they don't feel very successful and yet their brother or their sister are better than they are because they didn't have the same babysitter. They were older, they were younger. And so here all these memories are stacked piled inside your mind and this pressure is, is trying to get out. All this pressure and all of a sudden you're right here with me. You're right here with me. And I may talk about memories, I may talk about ideas. All of a sudden you start to squirm in your seat because you can feel something and remember something that happened to you. And the problem is you become what I call This is my great artwork, by the way. A trance monkey. You know what trance monkeys do? Monkey see, monkey do. I see a monkey and I act just like you. Because see here, I'm just talking. I'm just saying words. And you're, you're squirming in your seat. You're thinking about memories. And you don't know how to get rid of your feelings, do you? You just act up. You get angry. You throw something. You, get, you, you can't wait till, what is it called when you get in a room and you get to vent? Games. You can't wait for games so you can release some of this stuff. <laughs> you can't wait to lash out and just kind of give them some of your special stuff that you got brewing inside. But you know, do you really give it to them? Because I'm telling you, after the games, you can still go lay in bed and still feel it. Isn't that right? It didn't solve it. You may vent a little bit. How do you change your mind? That's the real question, isn't it? How do you change your mind? If you understand inside your mind who you are right now is a success. Because I'm telling you, if I walk the same steps that you've experienced, if I have the same parents, the same physical things and things that you went through, you know who I'd act like? Just like you. If I have the same thoughts, the same experiences, I'd be just like you. Matter of fact, I have brothers like you. I have a sister like you. And the only difference between me and them is I figured out one thing. I figured out how to change my mind. I figured out how to change my emotions. I actually became a real man. Because see, if you're a real man, you don't run from your experiences. You greet them. You step into them. And you feel it. Then you change it. But see, we don't know how to change it. We just know how to run. We can smoke. We can drink. We can beat, we can yell, anything, but don't go in there because you don't know what to do with it. Because see, what happens is, and you've heard it before, you've heard of Pavlov and the dogs. You know who Pavlov and the dogs is? Basically, Pavlov, what he'd do is have these dogs, and he would feed the dogs and ring the bell at the same time. Feed the dogs, ring the bell. Feed the dogs, ring the bell. Feed the dogs, ring the bell. And then he would ring the bell, and the dogs acted as if they were going to get something to eat. They started slobbering, but there were no food. Because, see, you and I are emotionally conditioned to act and perform without ever thinking. When you hear a word, when somebody says or look at you a certain thing, or you're in a certain situation, or, oh, by the way, there's a spider underneath the chair, or a snake, or they say a word, and all of a sudden you feel something. Who is it doing it to you? you but you don't know how to change you isn't that right all right so this is what happens inside of our mind here it is this is your brain and here's a set of eyes in front of the brain and of course whatever you witness in front of you goes inside your brain so here it is you have an experience with your mother or your father and your mind encodes it inside your mind so here you are you're five years old and something happened to you or 12 or 15 whatever it is that happened to you your brain just records it. It goes in, it records how you felt, what you smelt, what you heard, and everything, all the sounds and everything, all at one, boom. And all of a sudden, when you think about it, you start to feel it, because the brain will send this message to the body. They'll send it to your heart, your liver, your lungs, large intestine, small intestine, stomach. And all of a sudden, when you're thinking, 
it sends a message to the entire body to feel whatever it holds here. So here it is. You have this thought, this experience, and it becomes a reality inside your body. By the way, right now, you can feel good just by merely moving your thoughts to somewhere else. Or you can feel bad by moving your thoughts to somewhere else. You can think of something. So let me ask you, if you always think happy thoughts, does it get rid of the bad memories? No, it doesn't. But if you know how to go to the bad memory right here and actually change the bad memory, change it internally where you can't feel it anymore and you try to make it come back and you can't, did you succeed? Yeah. But you know what the biggest problem about doing this? The biggest problem is, if you change all your bad memories, who will you be? Who will you be if you change all the bad ones? Anybody have an idea? What did you say? Anybody? Who? A better person. Yeah? So if you were to go back and you start changing all the crappy experiences, the physical, emotional, the sexual abuses, the beatings, the murders you witnessed, whatever it is that you saw in your life, if you go and change those memories, who would you be? A new person. But I'm going to tell you something. You will still have the same birth certificate, the same driver's license, and you'll still be you. But you have to work harder to feel bad. And somebody who think differently. Somebody who think differently. Not only think differently, but you'll think better of yourself. You like to improve your self-esteem? You may tell you how to do it? It's very simple. Inside you, you have memories. And this memory has events inside this memory. Whatever happened here affects how you act out here. Do you realize what I just said? All right. If you have memories inside you, and these are harmful, hurtful memories, these memories tell your, your consciousness what to do. It just does it sometimes without you even thinking. So the only way you're going to improve your self-esteem is you have to change what you hold in yourself to esteem yourself. For example, this is a true story. I'm 11 years old. I'm 11 years old and we moved to a, a, a my grandmother's house. You know, of course, you know, there was a third school that we moved to that year. You know, my dad, he gets a new job, you know, he gets fired, and he's angry, and he's upset, so we got this new place. And so here it is, we moved to this new house, it's actually my grandmother's house, we're renting from her, and um, obviously I didn't have the great skills of making friends, and I made these boys mad at me. And so they chased me up the top of this tree. So I'm at the top of this tree, and they're throwing rocks at me, and, they, and my dad pulls in the driveway. Well, the tree was right next to the driveway. So the boys backed off, so I climbed down and went to my father. All right? And so here it is. I went to my father. He stepped out of the car, and he had a hammer in his hand, and he beat the crap out of me with his hammer right in front of those boys. All right? It happened when I'm 11 years old. This is a true story. He beat the crap out of me with his hammer. All right? So here it is at 11. Now, if I go remember this memory at, at 22, would I feel that, that memory? When I'm 44 years old, when I remember that memory, I would still feel it. But today, I can tell this story, and it's not my story. It's not even true. And the reason is I figured out how to change it. And what I figured out, every person, now here it is, let's think about it. Here it is, your age right now, however old you are, you know there's things that happened to you before now. 12, 15, 20, however, how many years old? And the moment you think about that memory, you know what happens? You start to feel it, don't you? You feel the hurt, you feel the pain, and if you think too much about it, you'll have to go eat, you have to go do something to avoid whatever you're feeling, all right? So here's something interesting. If you remember today, you're not there anymore. It feels like you are, but when you remember today, who is beating me with the hammer now? It's me. Who's the movie director in my mind? Me. My father died in a car accident in 1991. In 1991, he died. So it's not him. So I am the movie director of my own memories. That means I can entertain myself and feel bad for no reason just because I choose to focus on it. But I won't choose to focus on it. You know why? Because the more I'm triggered in life, the more people in my life start triggering my emotions and feelings, it'll drive me crazy. 
I'm going to try to escape my pain. I'm going to find anything to avoid my pain outside me. That means I'll go eat, I'll go drink, I'll do my drug, I will beat something, I'll run something, I'll try to yoga something. But does it really change it? No. But when I remember this memory, it is really me who's beating me with the hammer now. Not only is it me, but I'm also rehearsing how to feel bad in all ways. Because now I'm the beater in my memories. And what I discovered is that I can actually change my memory. I can pull all the emotions out and completely change those. And you can too. But you know, here's the weirdest thing. You know, if somebody makes you mad or someone hurts your feelings and you do stupid things, isn't that right? I mean some really stupid things. I mean, you've probably done some stupid things that land you in jail. Isn't that right? Now, I have some stupid things that I would like to introduce to you that you won't land in jail. As a matter of fact, it'll give you power and control over your emotions and feelings. But it looks a bit strange. But not as strange as laying in jail and doing stupid things. All right? All right, so here it is. If everything inside me is really me, if I change what I hold inside me, I actually change. So, let's do this again. Take a deep breath again. And blow, close your eyes and go back to a positive memory. Something that makes you feel good. Anything that makes you feel good. It could be the day that someone loved you, so, someone said nice to you. It could be the day you lay on the beach enjoying the sun. Whatever it is. Noticing who is doing this. It's not my memory. It's yours. All right, open your eyes, look up here. You're doing this to you. I may be asking you to do it, but some of you aren't doing it. And you know why? Because you've learned it's not safe to think about good memories. It's better to think of all the bad memories so that, good, so that, that way the good ones won't mess up your misery. I mean, you've got to stay in alignment with your pain. That you'll be a good family member. You've got a good excuse to have problems. But I'm telling you, it's not good. So here it is. This is what I discovered that if, I, when I'm tapping, how many, how many do not know what tapping is first? Do not know what tapping is. It's very simple. It's something very different. It works. It's odd. And it gives you control. All right? So let's do this. Um, you all have had a bad experience, haven't you? I would like to show you something, how your brain works. Let's do this. Don't pick a big one. Pick a small one. Like someone in this room here takes a fire out of you. Jeff, where are you? Right All right, think about him. <laughs> think about somebody else that you work with that bother you. Think about something, a task that you got stuck with or, or something. Just think about it. Take a deep breath, close your eyes, and think about something. Or a person. Or an event. Anything that bothers you. Now I want you to look at it as if you're there again. See it. Notice how you feel. You probably see pictures in your mind. You probably feel feelings in your body. Is that correct? Right? You got it? All right. Notice how strong the, the feelings are in your body. Zero, I can't feel it. Ten, really strong. Notice how strong. All right? Now, if you can make it stronger, go ahead and do it. Make it worse. I want to show you how in control you are of it. All right? All right, now, what I want you to do in your mind, imagine as if you had some, some helium-filled balloons in your hand and you let them go. What happens to helium-filled balloons when you let them go? They float up and disappear, don't they? I want you to do something really strange. Take two fingers like this. Two fingers. And I want you to do everything I say, and do everything and say everything I say. <laughs> Tap between your eyes like this. I release and let it go. Release. All sadnesses. All sadness. Side your eye, release and let go. Release. All, fears. All fears. Under the eye, release and let go. Release. All emotional traumas. All emotional traumas. Angers. Guilts. Guilt. I release, I release all the colors. Sensations in my body. In my body. I'm really here doing this crazy exercise. Really exercise. Collarbone, it's okay to let it go. It's safe to let it go. Grab your wrist like this, take a deep breath. Blow it out. Say peace. peace. Now let's remember a time that you felt peaceful. It could be anywhere in your life. For me, it's just laying my head on the pillow and going to sleep. And then take another deep breath. Blow it out and say peace. Good job. All right, now go back to that memory, whatever it was, that person who was irritating you. 
Think about them. Notice how it may have changed. Notice what's left. Look at their face. Notice whatever happened. See if you can still feel it. Can you feel it? Right? Notice where you feel it at. If you know the feeling, if it's emotion, notice the emotion. If the picture changed in your head, notice what happened. All right, let's do it again. Take two fingers. Let it go. Side your eye, let it go. Just touch it. Under the eye, let it go. Collarbone, let it go. Deep breath. Peace. All right, go to that memory. Remember you started with one? Go back and feel it again. See what's left. Notice inside you where you feel it at. You got it? Do it like this. Let it go. 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 Peace. All right, now, go back to the memory that you were thinking about. As you go back to this memory, how many of you notice now inside your head the picture in your mind started changing? Is that right? All right. Notice the feeling in your side of your body. Did it change? Is there still some left in there? Notice where it is inside you. Notice the feeling. Notice the sensation in your body, whatever it is. If it's an emotion, notice it. If you're scared and you're doing this, and what the fuck are you doing to your my head? Feel that one. You got it? Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Deep breath. Peace. Because I'm telling you, people are not used to changing their mind. They believe everything in their head to be true. They act as if it were true, and it's not. It was true, but it's over. Go back to the memory. Notice what's left inside you. Can you feel it? Can you see it? How many, how many of you notice inside your head it changed already? Raise your hand if you can feel it inside your body and your head. That's a majority right there. All right. By the way, do I know what you did? Do I know the memory that you are addressing? Isn't this powerful? Do you know you can change your mind? You can change bad feelings? Wouldn't that be something? If you could change all the bad ones? You know what I used to do when I first started doing this? I'd lay at night and I would mentally do it in my mind. I would go to memory after memory after memory and I kept going to the memory until I changed it and made a smile on everybody's face. By the way, I want you to understand, memories are not real. And a good example is I went to a restaurant the other day and I looked on the menu and it said, tomato salad. Now the person next to me already bought an olive salad. I'm looking at this olive salad. It's got olives in it. It's got all this greens and all these vegetables in it. And I said, man, I'd like, it. Uh, I'd like that. So I wanted tomato salad. And in my mind, that's what I was getting. And you know what? And they brought, the, brought it out to me. It was a plate, flat plate with sliced tomatoes and an olive with a piece of salad sticking out of it. See, in my mind, it wasn't the same thing. I'm sitting around the dinner table. My brothers are talking about an event that happened. And they're telling the story, and it's not the same memory. And my youngest brother said, Dad wasn't like that. I said, yes, he was. Because, see, he had a different dad, and yet it was the same father. Because he had different memories. And that's the difference. It's what we hold here that makes a difference out there. Because, see, we have these filters on. We only see from our mess inside of our head. And when you start asking questions, you discover it's not the same message that you were receiving. We interpret it by based on this stuff here. So in order to get a better life, in order for you to change, by the way, the whole purpose of being in Habilitat is to do one thing, and that is learn to take control of yourself. Learn where the power is inside yourself. Because see, if you're always running from what you have inside, where does it go when you get there? You know what? You can drink until you pass out. When you wake up, is it gone? You can swim to the bottom of the sea. Where is it? With you. If you, can, you can go anywhere. If you don't change it here, it goes with you. So what we want to do is discover real emotional power. This is where the, this is where the tire meets the road. It, it separates the boys and the men. The boys will run from the memories. The men will step up and they will get rid of them. They own them. This is my feeling. I'm doing it to me. Show me how 
to change myself. Now I'm telling you something. I'm standing in front of you. I'm traveling all over the world. I'm speaking in different countries. And it's not because I'm any smarter than people who have PhDs or in prison. The only difference between me and them is I discovered the magic. And then the magic is going here and changing what I hold here. Because I'm telling you, you could do exactly what I do, and you'll probably do a better job. Because you've been through a lot more than I have. And once you clean that up, you will do something greater. Because the crap that you've been through makes a powerful you when you clean it up. When you take the worst of the worst and it becomes the greatest, you've really done a great job. So one of the things that I did here with my father, it always bothered me. I would never go there until one day I decided to clean me up. And one of the things I noticed when I went inside my mind, I looked at what I was doing inside my head. I had this image inside my mind. I'll show you how we do it inside your head. When I was remembering this memory, I was seeing it like this. That means I remember my father, I see my father and I see me. In my mind, that's how I see it. Now, by the way, you're here with me, aren't you? Are you looking at you, watching me? You only see me and a few heads in the way, right? All right. This is how it went in. But when I remember the memory, I'm watching my father beat me with a hammer. Did I see that that way? Which proves to you, memories are not really real. They're internally generated and created. So I thought, interesting. I'm watching him do this to me, and I can't do that logically. So I'm noticing inside my mind that I'm doing it to me. So it's like I'm a fly on the wall, I'm up here, I'm a fly, and I'm watching him do this. I think it's impossible, because see, this is how what happens. When you go to your memories, how many when you went to your good memory, when you remembered a good memory, how many of you were actually in your body as if you were there? All right. How many of you were watching you have a good time? That means you saw you and whatever's going on. By the way, it never really happened that way. How many of you, when you went to the bad experience, you were actually in the body seeing and feeling it happen to you for real? Yeah. All right. That means you're in first person. By the way, if you understand that you can take your memories and you can push it away and you can look at the faces. So what I did is I started looking at my father's face and how he was looking, you know. And I'd look at my face and I noticed that my father was angry and I would tap. I'd just use the tapping just like we did. I'd tap on his look. I'd look at his face. I'd look at the, 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 the expression on his face. I'd go like this over and over again. All of a sudden, his face changed. Now, by the way, did his face really change for real? Or did I really change how I hold the face inside me? By the way, remember what I said, who is it that's inside me now? It's me. So actually, I'm changing how I represent my father. So I kept tapping, and all of a sudden, my father's face changed. And the interesting thing is when I started changing his expression in my mind, guess who started to feel better? Yeah, me. By the way, did it change the real event? Or did it change my perception of the event? Perception. By the way, the real event isn't real anymore, is it? No. All right. So your story is only good as a storyteller. So here it is. Then I started looking at my face. I felt abused. I felt rejected. I felt these. I kept tapping until that little boy inside me was smiling. And all of a sudden, I can look at this memory right here, and it changed. Now, I was looking at this action between my father. He had a hammer in his hand. He was beating me. And I looked at it, and I tapped like this. I just tapped on it like this over and over again. All of a sudden, my mind gave me something better. It put a fishing pole in my dad's hand. And in my mind, I feel like my father said, would you like to go fishing? I said, sure, Dad. And you know what? We went fishing. And the amazing thing about this is I happened to catch the biggest fish. I mean, it's gigantic. And I could still see the look on my father's eyes. He was envious of this great big fish I caught. Now, did this really happen? Yes, it did. Inside my mind. Because what's real? Right now. So, so did I really change the real event? No. I changed how I hold this event <coughs> against myself. 
By the way, if I go change all my bad memories inside myself, does that improve my self-value? Does that mean I would make more money in my future? That means I could have more love and I have better relationships with my father and my brothers and my friends? Do you see what I'm saying? Where is your power? The power is in what you think. The power is discovering how to change what you hold. As you change what you hold, your whole world changes. I don't know about you. Wouldn't you like to leave this place? Have a dream that you always wanted? Have something you always thought it was beyond your reach? And you know what's keeping you from it? Just yourself. And you know what, what's holding you against you, what's keeping you from it? It is the hurts, the pains, the fears, the stories, and the connections you have with others that keep you here, keep you in where you said you don't want to be. The only way you're going to get something different is change what you do inside you. That's it. And you know, there's real power in that, real power. Because see, once you start changing all, this, all these memories, and you put smiles in every bad memory inside your head, the interesting thing here is that you start to have a big smile on your face. And you'll naturally act from your inner power. By the way, there's nothing wrong with your misery. You did a good job. You earned your stripes. You were a good family member. You acted just like those people you said you didn't want to grow up to be like. I see your father and your mother sitting right here in front of me. As I look at your face, and you said, I would never, I'd hate to be like them. I don't want to be like them. And the more you hate being like them, the more you have the memories of them inside you. You said you don't want to be like, and the more you think about you don't want to be like them, you just keep looking at the things you don't want to be like, the more you become like. So this is how you do it. You go to the memory, and you change it. That simple. Isn't that interesting? All right. So, any questions? We have a microphone, right? External microphone, Jeff? No? Well, just ask the question, I'll just answer, I'll say it out loud. So, uh, with our understanding, God, liberty, etc., you envision your liberty in 1980. But what about the scars? Because every time I look in the mirror, I see this scar, and it brings back the, the real me. Okay, 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 let me, let me answer that. So, what happens when you look at the scars on your face? And when you look at the scar on your face, it brings back the real memory. Is that what you're saying? All right, here's the interesting thing. You can look at the scar. It's not the scar that brings the memory back. It's the memories you didn't change, the real memory you didn't change. But see, again, there's things that happen, yes. And the meaning you give to it determines how you feel. You can change the meaning. You have a scar on your face that bothers you right now? You have a scar somewhere? Would you like to change the meaning of it right now? Yeah. You want to come up here and do it? All right, come on up. Right here. Anybody have a mirror so we can look at himself? Anybody got a little mirror anywhere? Well, you know what it looks like, right, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, go get me a mirror, somebody. All right, so first of all, you have a scar on your face or where? You got one? Yeah. I don't even see it. Okay, good. All right, so, so what I want you to do is I want you to think about this. You got, you got a microphone? We'll just wait. All right, bring me a microphone. I got a mirror. <coughs> you got a mirror coming too? Yes. Thank you for volunteering. All right. Did you volunteer? Did I volunteer you? 50-50. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's one thing that I always have people do, one, if, especially if you want to address your... your your body, your face, your, um, your appearance. The, one of the biggest problems we have is when we see ourselves, we dislike ourselves. We find something wrong with ourselves. Oh, there we go. Oh, God. I ain't gonna miss a thing. Yeah, here, just, here, just, just sit there and hold it for right now. All right, so you see yourself right there? Yeah. All right, all right. So what I want you to do is uh, hold, hold the mic by your mouth. Here, I'll hold it for you. All right, introduce who you are. Hell, my name is... Um, my name is Mark. Hey, Mark. How you doing? All right. You have a scar on your face. Why don't you look at it? Okay. All right. Now, zero, it doesn't bother me at all. Ten, it really bothers me. How strong is it? Like eight. Eight. Now, you know how you got that scar, don't you? 
And I don't want you to tell us what it is unless you want to. Yeah, I know I got the scar. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at it, and I want you to remember what happened to you, whatever, how you got the scar. You got it? Does it make it stronger than an eight? Yeah. All right. How strong is it? Zero to ten or higher? Ten. Or is it higher than a ten? Can you make it worse than a ten? No. All right, good. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes. Okay. And I want you to go to the memory in your mind as if you're re-experiencing that experience again. See what you saw. Hear what you heard. Feel the emotions. Hear the words. Whatever happened, notice how strong it is. You got it? Now, what I want you to do is imagine in front of you a tree. I just pulled all the roots out from under the tree. It has no roots. You know what happens to a tree without roots? It falls. It falls. I want you to say it out loud and I'll touch you. Say, say it out loud. Say, I release and let go. I release and let go. All my sadnesses. All my sadnesses. All the angers. All the angers. All the hurts. All the hurts. All the sensations of that experience. All the sensations of that experience. I'm really here with Robert. I'm really here with Robert. That event happened. That event happened. It's all over. It's all over. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. They had problems. They had problems. I had problems. I had problems. It's over now. It's over now. It's time to let it go. It's time to let it go. Deep breath. Blow it out. <sighs> Say peace. Peace. Now think of a good memory. Any good memory in your life. Step into the good memory and feel that good feeling. Mm -hmm. Notice in your body where you feel it. Mm -hmm. All right, say peace again. Peace. All right, good. Now go back to the memory. I want you to look at your face. I want you to see that scar. As you see the scar, I want you to remember the memory. And does it still hurt you and bother you? And tell me how much it does bother you. Still a 10. How do you know it's a 10? <laughs> Where's it, where do you feel this 10? How do you know it's a 10? Because I can feel. Where do you feel it? Right here in your chest? It still bothers me. It's in your chest right here? I have a hard time letting stuff go. All right, let's do that. Say, I don't want to let it go. I don't want to let it go. I love that stuff. I, <laughs> I love that I stuff. I love that stuff. I love getting angry as I look at my face. I love getting angry as I look at my face. I love rehearsing those memories. I love rehearsing those Great memories. Great entertainment. Great entertainment. I'm a bit stubborn. I'm a bit stubborn. Don't take my shitty feelings away. Don't take my shitty feelings away. Let it go. Let it go. Deep breath. <sighs> Say peace. Peace. All right, look at that face. Look at that scar. Remember the memory. Now it's just funny. Well, it is funny to me. Yeah. All right, I want you to let, but it bothered you. I want you to make it bother you. Look at that scar. Okay. It was a 10. How strong is it? Eight. How do you know it's an eight? Because it was a little bit more calm. All right. A little bit but more still, peace. there is a part of you that isn't peaceful, right? Yeah. All right, feel that part. Got it? Yeah. Say, so let it go. I let it go. I'm so glad it's over. I'm so glad it's over. It's all done with. It's all done with. Most people don't even see the scar. Most people don't even see the scar. They don't even know the memory. They don't even know the memory. But I can let it go, too. But I can let it go, I'm too. I'm really here. I'm really here. To let it go. To let it go. Deep breath. Say peace. Peace. All right, now, look at that scar, and I want you to make it bother you. Is it in? No. What is it? It kind of dropped a lot. I'm sorry to hear that. Why are you like, going to torment yourself? <laughs> like um, a four? A four? Feel it. Look at that and feel four. You got that four feeling? No, I just went back to five. Oh, how'd you do it? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do in your head to make it a five? I, don't know, I just it went back to five. All right, you got the memory then. You're seeing something in the memory? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. All right, look at that memory. Is it in color or black and white inside your mind? Color. All right. Say, so I release all the colors. I release all the colors. It's safe to let go of the colors. It's safe to let go of the colors. It's safe to change the actions and behaviors. It's safe to change the actions and behaviors. I'm really here. I'm really here. I'm so glad it's over. I'm so glad I it's over. I survived. I survived. Deep breath. <sighs> Say peace. Peace. All right, look at that scar. What do you think about it? I don't know. I can't see it too good anymore. Is your eyesight going bad all of a sudden? <laughs> no. <laughs> so I release and let it go. I release and let it I'm go. I'm going to miss that scar. I'm going to miss that scar. Look at that handsome face now. Look at that handsome face. I used to saw a big scar on my face. You see a big scar on my face. It's over now. It's over now. It's safe to let it go. It's safe to let it go. Deep breath. Peace. Peace. Now look at that scar. I can't, I can't even see a scar on your face. Where's it at? Um, somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> let it go. I let it go. I'm going to miss that scar. I'm going to miss that scar. I've entertained myself every time I shave to see I that scar. <laughs> I entertain myself every time I shave to see that scar. Let it go. I let it go. Deep breath. Deep breath. Peace. Peace. All right, look at the scar on your face. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it, but it doesn't bother me. All right, can you? I want you to make it bother you. Boy, it, it just messes up a pretty face. You know that. Yeah. I mean, God is nothing but an ugly scar. I mean, it's about, is it the whole face? Is that what it is? <laughs> Deep breath. Blow it out. 
Peace. Peace. All right, look at that scar. Does it really bother you? No. No, bring it back. It was a 10, right? Yeah. Make it a 10 so again. No, it wasn't the scar, really. It's more like the memory. memory. Yeah. Exactly. Go back to the memory now. Okay. Now, when you see this memory in your mind, don't tell us content. Do you see you and someone else? Or is it just you? How do you see it in your mind? The memory that how you got the scar. Me and someone else. Several other people. All right. So can you see the other people in the memory? No, not really. So what do you see in your mind now? Is it just you? Yeah. All right, look at you in your memory. Okay. As you look at your face, look at his face. How old are you there? 18. All right, look at that 18-year-old young boy. You see him? Look at the expression on his face. So it's safe to let it go. Safe to let it go. It's okay to let it go. It's okay to let it go. It's okay now. It's okay now. It's all over. It's all over. I'm safe. I'm safe. Deep breath. Say peace. Peace. Look at that 18-year-old boy. As you see his face, is it smiling yet? Yeah. Look at that smile on his face. Close your eyes. <laughs> and I want you to send him a message. I want you to give him something that will change his life today. You can go give him a hug if you want to. Okay, I messed up. I gave him a slap. I'm going to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really slap him? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to slap you too. So. <laughs> let it go. What you should do is you go tap. You say, let it go, let, let it go, go, let, let it go. go. Deep breath. By the way, you've been slapping yourself around for a long time, hadn't you? Yeah. All right. All right, that slap. Okay. Say, if you love me, you slap me. If you love me, you slap me. If you love me, you think something, find something wrong with me. If you love me, you find something wrong with me. It's not a good way of loving me. It's not a good way of loving me. I forgive myself for being hard on myself. I forgive myself for being hard on myself. It's safe to let it go. It's safe to let it go. Deep breath. Peace. Peace. I look at that 18-year-old boy. As you see this boy, how do you see him now? What would you do to change his life? What would you say to him? Let it go. Let it go. Right. It's time to let it go. It's time to let it go. It's safe to let it go. It's safe to let it go. Deep breath. Peace. Peace. All right, let's do this again. You actually, it did actually bother you when you're sitting back there. You remember? It really did when you saw that scar on your face. Yeah. All right, can you make that bother you now? No. How do you feel about your scar? I don't feel nothing really. It's all good already. That's good, right? Yeah. Did it work? Yes. How do you know it worked? Because I'm at peace. That's good. Close your eyes and feel that peace feeling. Okay. Notice where you feel it at. That peace, you feel it somewhere, don't you? Yeah. Where you feel it at? Right here. Right here. Feel that peace. Okay. Good job. Good job. Give him a hand. <laughs> All right. Very good. So, so, so notice that. Yeah. You know, how many of you see him? He de actually did bother him at first. All right. Now I was addressing emotions. I was addressing how, what he was seeing in his mind. And also, there's a process we call defractionation, which basically, um, how we have problems is that it's all a hypnotic state. It's a trance. When you think about something, if it's positive or negative, it's still a trance. When you think of happy memories, the more you practice feeling good, the better you get at feeling good. The more you practice feeling bad, the better it is you get at feeling bad. So every time you look at yourself, whatever you say and feel when you see yourself, you're practicing and affirming something. So the question is, which would you rather have? Would you rather have the good or would you rather have the bad? If you practice the bad, what kind of results will you get in your future? And then you get to come back or you get something worse. Isn't that right? So the only way to get something better is to change what you hold within you, about you, and against you. Do you realize that? So that's what you have to do is figure out how to do it. Now, how many of you, when you did this, you were doing something this silly, wasn't it? Wasn't that kind of silly? Yeah, which is more silly? Getting angry, punching the wall, or tapping on yourself? Punching the wall is definitely more silly. Which is more silly? Tapping on yourself like this. Or banging your head against the wall. That's stupid, isn't it? You know, of course, you know, I'm pretty creative in my tapping. You know, because I, you know, I, I have a girlfriend, and, you know, sometimes she bothers me. <laughs> and she goes, you need to tap. I go, fuck's sake, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And then, then I'd find other creative ways of tapping. <laughs> Peace. And of course, you know, you can do it like this, or you can just do it in your mind. If you want real power in your life and real control in your life, do something that works. The problem with doing this is that you're actually discovering how to heal yourself. And the most scariest part about yourself is not what you see outside, is but what you find in here. And when you find it in here, a real warrior, a real soldier, a real trooper, a real man will step up, tap until it's gone, or until you pass out, whichever comes first. And that's the truth. Because see, cowards have run from our problems. We drank it, we smoked it, we screwed it, we bought it, we shopped it, we gambled it. We did anything but doing the real thing. And that is changing what we hold inside. And that's the real deal. The cool thing about this process is that you can heal your body. You can actually release physical pain. You can lose weight, you can gain money, you can gain loving relationships, and you can move beyond your entire family. All you have to do is just do it. Now, I would like to give you a, a good way to do this, to work on yourself, and this will be your assignment for the rest of your life. And if you do this, if you do these two things that I'm getting ready to share with you, I promise you, if you do it, your entire life will change. It will be a completely different life. You will outperform your mom, you'll outperform your parents, you'll outperform even Jeff. And even me. All right. <clears throat> what people have, what I have discovered, what has put you and motivate you in your life is this one driving force. And it is, pardon me, what you don't want. Everything you've done the reason why you're here, the reason why you go anywhere to improve anything is because inside you, there's something you don't want, something you don't like, something you're afraid of, the worst of the worst. And so what I discovered, if you do this one thing, first of all, if you were to change something about your life or if there's something you want, if you were to change one thing, it could be like, I just want to get rid of this one memory. I just want to get rid of my fear. I, get, I want to get rid of my fear of rejection my abandonment issues, my feeling that I'm an idiot and I'll never mount anything, whatever it is, if you write this down, whatever it is you don't want. Now you put this right here, whatever this is. I don't want to be rejected. I don't want bad golf score. I don't want to be in prison. I don't want, whatever it is, put it on here. Now this is part of the art of change, A-R-T, change. Aim, release, and transform. So what you don't want. Put it in there. What is it you don't want? Or what you do want. We do what you do want. All right? Now, in order to really get the formula to change this, what you don't want, or whatever it is that's keeping you from getting what you do want, you do a list. What you don't want. And what you do is you write down, say, for example, uh, what, 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 what is it you'd like to change? Anybody want to get rid of what? Anger. 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 Temper. Okay. So I don't want to be angry, right? And of course, and then you ask yourself, how do I know I don't want to get angry? This is a question. Ask yourself, how do I know? How do you know you, you want to get rid of your temper? If you, just give me, a, how do you know you want to get rid of it? I really don't want to. You want to get rid of your temper. How do you know you want to get rid of it? Because it bothers me and uh, it just bothers me. It bothers me. Get you into trouble. All right, so those are two things. It bothers me. It gets me into trouble. And then you start asking, oh, it bothers me. Well, how does it bother you? How does it bother you? So it hurts your family, it hurts your mother, and it hurts you, it hurts your loved ones. So what you do is you write down, it hurts my loved ones. And then what I would suggest, writing memories. Do you remember hurting your mother? 
All right, you write that memory down. I hurt my mother because of this. And then I hurt my, my sister. And this is what it did to me. I got in trouble. And you write every memory that supports why you don't want to get angry. And by the way, as you write this list, it's giving you the formula to how you are angry. Because here's the weirdest thing. You, a lot of people say, well, I just don't want to be like my mother. I don't want to be like my father. And they say that, but in reality, they have all these memories right here of them being angry, all the things that you did, and all the hurts and all the experiences, and they're inside your head. So that even though they're inside you, you say you don't want it, but you hold it in you. So here it is. I had the memory of my father beating me. Now, the interesting thing, the beating feeling of the memory drive me to beat myself up and to beat other people. Do you hear what I said? So if you have bad memories inside you, those memories are actually helping you do it again, to repeat it again, to stay in alignment. So what we do is we look at the memories you don't want, and this is how you get your list, and then you start changing those. And of course, when you get angry and you have temper, how does that make you feel as a person? Sad, weak, helpless, no control. And then, of course, you're the puppet. Now, somebody can look at you a certain way, and you get angry. You know, I had a guy who gets so upset, and he couldn't turn the light switch off correctly. I mean, I, I, he wanted to use my washing machine, and he'd get pissed off at the washing machine. And it did nothing. It just does what washing machines do. <laughs> is it the washing machine that pissed him off? No, he just knew how. So what you do is you write a list of how do I know I don't want this. And, it, and then you ask yourself, well, I've never experienced this before. Well, what's the worst of the worst of this anger or the temper? What's the bad thing's going to happen if this anger gets worse? Write these lists down. Because these lists here will also give you the formula to change these two so that you'll free yourself from whatever it is you said you don't want. Now, this is if you go and you start doing this list, and you know what's going to happen when you do the list of memories that you don't like, that hurt you and affected you? You know what happens when you do the list? You feel like shit. Isn't that right? You feel angry, you feel upset. Where's it coming from? In you. And that's how you know you need to go there. And once you go there and you start changing it, now this is a cool thing, you go to the memory that you hurt your mother. All right? You go to this memory and you start tapping on how you feel about mom. When you see mom crying, you tap this out. By the way, is your mom inside your head? Not really. This is about you. So you have this memory of hurting your mother and you have your memory of losing control, and you have memories of feeling hurt, and you keep tapping, you keep changing this, all of a sudden, you take this memory and you change it what you do want. So now you sit of your mother being hurt, she's not being hurt, she's smiling, and she's so proud of you because you have control now. You go to every bad memory and you make sure you change the memory. We're not talking about making up a new one, we're actually changing the original memory to where it can't see the same. You can't look at it the same. Now, when we, what was your name? Mark. Mark? Well, we went to Mark. Now, Mark, when you go back to the memory that we started with, does it look the same now? No. You see, inside of his brain, we changed his memory. Or he did. I helped him. See, again, how many, how many would like to improve your memory? Like to improve your memory. All right? Interesting, almost every hand goes up. Isn't that right? But here's something interesting. Most of you believe that memories are stuck in permanent, aren't they? They're only the shitty ones that you rehearse are stuck in permanent. <laughs> only the shitty ones that you rehearse. The good ones you don't remember. Because you didn't make it a point to remember it. You see what I'm saying? So now you can change the shitty ones. Change them, turn them into good ones. And write it in your happy journal. So there's two things. If you do this one right here, do your list. Don't just feel crap. Do the list and change the memory. Do one at a time. Just one at a time, go to the memory, change it. If there's something in your life, like say you have a job here that you have to do and you dread it every time you go do the job, you know the smart thing to do? Let it go, let it go, let it go until you can enjoy it. And then you enjoy it and you guess what? That job won't make you feel bad. Is it really the job making you feel bad or is it your crappy attitude? You can change that one. All right, so go to every memory and make them feel good. By the way, you can feel good in the lowest of the low places if you have the skill. Matter of fact, you, some of you have been in relationships where people love you, and they, they loved you, they loved you. Guess what you felt? No one loves me. Isn't that right? Because it's you doing it to you. 
So here it is. If you do this one thing, go to bad memories and change them. Just this. If this is your homework assignment until the day you die, change all bad memories. Okay? The second thing, if you do that one thing all by itself, you're going to make money, your life will be better, you'll be more successful, you'll be awesome just by doing that. And the second thing is get you a book. Get you a book that has nothing on the pages. Nothing. And start writing everything that makes you feel good. You can put photographs in it. If you practice feeling good every day and you look for something that's nice in your life and you practice feeling good, you know what's going to happen? You'll be successful at feeling good. And you know what you don't do now? You don't feel good enough. You don't practice in looking for what's nice. You don't look for what's nice. You know what you're looking for? Oh, that's a crappy day in paradise. I mean, you're always looking for something wrong. And guess what you find? Something wrong griping and complaining about your wonderful life. So here it is. If you do this one thing, change your bad memories. Second thing, remember the good ones. Now you can do this by, I, I, in my happy journal, I have pictures. I have photographs that I take and I will put it in my happy journal. I have cards that my children will give me and I'll put it in my journal. I write down things that I, I enjoy, I experience. And I can, I can still think of them. I can look at my book and start to feel good just in my mind because I practice feeling good for no reason. That's where your power is. You can change your life, and you can day it, start the day. The only thing is, is you just have to do it. That's it. And if you feel like you don't want to do it, feel that you don't want to do it. And do it like this. I don't want to do it, let it go. I don't want to do it, let it go. Let it go, let it go. Feel like you don't want to do it. You know why you don't want to do it? It's scary inside, I know. But it's your insides. And you can change you. It's that simple. What do you think? This, you're in the right place, aren't you? And this is how you're going to do it. So how do you do it? You go to the memories that bother you and stay with it and tap it until it's gone. I know this is tapping is weird. I know it's weird. But it's not as weird as doing some of the things that you've done. I mean, you know what's another thing that's really cool about this? It costs nothing. It costs nothing. You can do it on the toilet. Nobody knows you're doing it. You know, I'm interacting with him and he pisses me off. So, uh, pardon me, I gotta go to Lou, I gotta go to Donny, I gotta go to the toilet. And you're in there, that son of a bitch, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I'm realizing who's making me feel bad. Is it really him? It's me. You can do it in the privacy of your own mind. You know, <laughs> tap it, do something. <laughs> change it. And you change you, your life changes. Is that powerful? Yeah. All right, good. That's the present. That is the gift of a lifetime. Let's, let me go over it again. All right? Notice anything that bothers you. Just notice anything. Any memory, anything at all. Or a feeling inside your body. Here it is, Robert's talking about looking at my memories, and I don't like that idea. Right? Just feel that. Got it? All right, let's do this. Tap like this. Just tap it, and I want you to close your eyes and feel your fingers as you tap there. Just notice what it feels like, and notice your fingers. Just notice that feeling. Now tap beside your eye, notice that feeling. Just notice what the fingers feel like. Memorize that feeling. Under the eye, notice that feeling. Memorize the feelings. Feel it. All right, now the collarbone. Notice that feeling. Memorize that feeling. Notice what it feels like. Now grab your wrist, notice how that feels. Deep breath. Say peace. All right, let's do it again. Now think about the problem that you had. Think about whatever it is, your fear. And then just tap by yourself. Let it go. Beside your eye, let it go. Under the eye, it's safe to let it go. Collarbone, it's okay to let it go. Wrist, it's okay. Deep breath. Peace. All right, let's do it again. I want you to think about your problem. Don't tap, but just think about your problem that bothers you. Think about it. What fear of doing this, fear that you don't know, this is weird, whatever it is that you can think of. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to tap, but you can't move your hands. But you can pretend like you're really doing it in your mind. So feel your fingers between your eyes, mentally tap. 
Mentally do it. Let it go. Beside your eye, let it go. Under the eye, let it go. Collarbone, let it go. In your mind, grab the wrist, take a deep breath, blow it out, and peace. All right? You can do it this way. You can just, you can just do it like this. You can just go like this. Something that simple. The key to making this happen is noticing inside you a feeling, a picture, a sound, a sensation, tap, and then go check and see if it's gone. If it isn't gone, do it again. How many times do you do it until it's gone? However it takes. If you have a big emotional one, keep doing it until it's gone. You'll get control, you'll gain the power, and you can get something beyond you ever thought possible. Make it up to what you want. Pretty awesome? Thank you, guys. Thank you. I also want to share with you, I have, like, like Jeff said, we have a lot of people from all over the world who, who came and volunteered their time. They bought their flights here just to come and help you. And what we're doing is we're doing sessions, and we will help you address the memories. Uh, we, we wanna, uh, so that means what I have you do is you can pick out some really big memories. You can pick out memories that you don't want to tell anybody about. You can pick out stuff, issues, your addiction, whatever it is that drives you to do what you don't want to do. And those, those guys of you who came from other countries who fast DFT, come on up here. Deirdre, all you guys, come on up. Come on up here. Come on, JP, PJ. <laughs> come on up. What about the ones that came from this country? Oh, this country. Yeah, this country too. Oh, oh come on up. What are you doing? Are you being shy? Well, everyone. Come on up. Albuquerque is another country. Okay. Oklahoma is another country too. So these guys have been trained with me. They're they're experts, and they can help you. You know what we're doing? We're going to be here the next. I don't know. We leave. Some of us leave on Tuesday. I think some. Who's leaving on the eleventh? She's staying here. She's going to be here a little extra. And what we'll do is we have people already on the list. If you want to be a part of the list and you want to change stuff, if, even if you want to address one memory and you don't want to do five, all your memories and get rid of all the bad ones, you just want to try it with one, set up a point with these guys, put your name on the list, and we will work you. We'll help you. We'll educate you. We'll empower you. Jeff also has DVDs of mine. Do spend some time learning how to do this, and it'll change your life. So these are the guys here. We have Tessa. We have... Diana, we have Adam, that's my son, Deirdre from Ireland, we have Maria, Rachel, Robert, Dave, and JP, and Dura from Hungary. And so we're here to help you, and we'll be back. So thank you guys. Give these guys a hand.